a solutions architect with Click. Uh, been with Click in the data integration space for a good 20 plus years. Uh, glad to be here today. Uh, before we get started, I just want to let you know, uh, right now we have a small group, uh, but if you have questions, I ask that you please go ahead and ask those questions in the chat window. I have two or three peers from Click that have joined me today, and they should be able to answer any questions that you have. And then naturally, if they can't answer those questions, I'm sure they'll get back with me with your name, your contact information, and then I'll send you a response, okay? Um, so I know we're running a little late, so let's kind of jump right to it. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by giving you an overview of Click's data integration suite and, and what we do really well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and follow that up with a, a couple of demos, right? The first demo is gonna replicate data from a relational source to Snowflake. And I'm gonna show you how that's easily done through our UI, okay? And then the second demo, hopefully we'll have enough time, is I'm gonna show you how to do real-time data warehousing to a Snowflake data warehouse using our Click Compose solution, okay? So like I said, a little overview in two demos. And if you have any questions, like I said, please feel free to uh, put those in the chat, right? So let's get to it again. So once again, uh, I've been part of the Click team for about three years now. Um, for those, for those that don't know, um, about maybe two and a half years ago, Click purchased Attunity, and Attunity um, was basically the data integration piece, right? We were doing things on the left-hand side you see right here. We're doing real-time CDC streaming from source systems to data lakes and data warehouses, right? Um, we also handle data warehouse automation and data lake creation, and a lot of it a lot of these things are gonna go over today under the, the Click data integration space, right? Um, but, you know, Click is more, uh, how can I say this? Click basically has two different groups, right? And like I said, I'm from the data integration space, but we also have Click data analy analy analytics. And you're gonna see in the next uh, day or two, we have peers that will basically, basically show you how to do analytics against your data, right? So. Click data integration is about freeing your data, finding your data, and our analytics teams are basically there to help you understand it and take action, right? Do things like self-service analytics, embedded analytics, mobile analytics. And like I said, we have peers that'll be able to show you that uh, during, uh, during the week, okay? So I'm gonna concentrate really on the left-hand side today. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you about three things we do really, really well, right? So the first is, CDC streaming. And, and for those that aren't familiar with CDC streaming, what we do is we're able to grab committed transactions out of the, the sources you see on the left-hand side, right? Whether they're relational systems uh, like an Oracle or SQL server, whether they're data warehouses, um, whether they're files like CSV files or the mainframe like iSeries or DB2ZOS. We do support SaaS applications like Salesforce. And we do also support SAP. We're able to take data, committed transactions, and stream that data to other relational systems, either on-premise or in the cloud, right? So just some of the examples are MySQL and PostgreSQL. Um, today, I'm gonna to show you how to do that with Snowflake. And just to let you know, when it comes to Snowflake, we support Snowflake on Azure, we support on AWS, and we support it on Google's cloud. Okay, I'm gonna do a demo of that today. So I know I'm talking a little bit about relational systems, but just to let you know, we do support uh, data lakes, right? So a lot of folks will say, Chris, can you replicate data to AWS S3? Or can you replicate to ADLS Gen 2? And absolutely, we could do that. And then you could also, we also support uh, event-driven um, targets, like, a, like for instance, like a Kafka or a Kinesis very popular today to, to put messages out on Kafka topics. And we're able to do that all using our CDC streaming solution. And we call that replicate and I'll do a demo in a little bit. Probably about two or three years ago, our customers saying, that's great. You guys do CDC streaming, but you know, there's a lot of vendors out there that already do that. And, and what we really need help with is data warehouse automation. Okay. And by that is they wanted help, not only taking those committed transactions out of the source system, but they want, needed help creating a logical data warehouse model, right? 
And when they create that logical data warehouse model, they wanted to be able to enrich that model. They wanted to be able to add entities and attributes. And once they enrich that model, they wanted to be able to do some transformations of the data, right? Let me help me transform that data. And then more importantly, once I'm transforming that data, I may want to push it out to many different data marts within my organization, right? How do I push that data to a snowflake star schema, for instance? Okay, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So think about it. We're helping you with the whole workflow from committed transactions through creating a nice model of that data, through the transformations of the data, and then landing the final product in data marts within Snowflake. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. But also, if you guys are not using Snowflake, we do support many other different data warehouses. We have a few of them up there. A lot of our folks on the AWS side like to use Redshift. Some folks like to use Synapse, SQL Server, or Oracle, right? So those are supported data warehouse. We can do the same exact thing through our UI. Um, and then lastly, I mentioned this early when it came to CDC streaming, but uh, we also help you out with the managed data lake creation. I mentioned earlier we could land data into an Azure ADLS Gen 2 or an AWS S3 or even a, a big data environment uh, like on HDFS. But once you land data to those types of file systems, and once again, they're just files on a file system, it's not a relational target, how do I make sense of that data? How do I create a uh, historical data set or an ODS? And, and better yet, what if I need it in like a parquet type format that I wanna ingest into my ClickSense analytics tool, right? So we, we, we offer that too, all through the same common UI, right? So we do, the, we do these things really well. We call them our swim lanes, commit to commit, commit to model, commit to conform. I'm gonna demo CDC streaming today and the data warehouse automation tool. I'm gonna to use Snowflake as the target. In addition to those solutions, we do offer a catalog. A lot of folks wanna be able to catalog their objects because they don't want a mess of it, right? They, no matter where those um, entities are, whether it's on the source of the target or in a data lake, they wanna be able to catalog it. They want a shopping cart experience and then they wanna provision it to their analytics tools like a, a, a a click, uh, a click sense, for instance, right? So we can catalog your data. And then once again, you guys decide how you wanna consume the data. Uh, we are, like I mentioned for Snowflake, we're partners uh, with all the major cloud providers, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform. Naturally, we support anything from databases to, to data lakes, to, to streaming technologies, right? And also Spark, for instance, we do a lot with Databricks and all those different environments too. Uh, this is just a matrix I wanted to show you real quick of some of the many sources and targets that we support out there. Today, we're gonna concentrate on Snowflake, right? But uh, let's just say you had, you know, you're, a lot of companies are, are using more than just Snowflake, right? Uh, and so we have a number of different sources, a number of different targets, anywhere from relational mainframe to cloud sources and targets to NoSQL databases. This is something that you guys can go out on our website and, and take a look at it. We're also, we're also uh, recording this particular session. So you can go back to this session and actually look at this particular matrix too, if you're interested in any of these sources and targets today. So let's talk a little bit about replicating data uh, to Snowflake, okay? So our replicate solution, just to let you know, is based off a of middle tier. Uh, so what I mean by that is that you're gonna set up a VM or a server close to your source system, close to the source database, right? So let's just say that you wanna replicate from Oracle to Snowflake or SQL Server to Snowflake for that matter, right? You're gonna set up either a Windows 2019 server or a Red Hat server and then what you're going to do is you're going to put our binaries down on that middle tier. Our binaries, especially when you're running a Windows server, probably takes, guys, it takes about five minutes to install. In addition to our binaries, the only other thing that you need to put on that middle tier is, you know, how do I connect to the source and how do I connect to the target? What, what mechanism or client do I use? Okay. In the case of an Oracle source, it would be the Oracle client. Case of the SQL Server source, it'd be a SQL Server client. Same thing with iSeries, it'd be an iSeries ODBC client, right? 
So whatever that source system is, you're putting that you're putting that driver down on the middle tier. Now let's talk about Snowflake. What am I putting in for Snowflake? Well, all you need to do is go to Snowflake's dashboard and download the latest version of ODBC driver. You're going to put that particular driver on the middle tier. So the benefit of this middle tier, as you, as what I'm explaining to you guys, is there's nothing installed on the source. There's no agents on the source. There's nothing installed on the targets. There's no software. There's no agents on the target. Everything is absolutely run off that particular middle tier. Okay, so it's it's easy to manage. Think about it. I just have one server I have to manage. Maybe if I have to scale out in the future, I may have a second or a third. But think about it. if you have hundreds of sources and hundreds of targets, it, that would be pretty much a pain to put software down on all those sources and targets. So um, we basically make it easier for you to manage. Naturally, we do CDC, which is incremental incrementals to the target, right? So as those committed transactions happen on the source, inserts, updates, and deletes, they're going to show up in Snowflake within seconds, right? I tell folks within two to three seconds, that's pretty quick, not near to real time. And then we also can batch data. There may, there, there may be times where you guys don't wanna do incremental loading of data to Snowflake. You may have a, you know certain tables on the source that don't change much. And you may say, hey, Chris, I just wanna batch them once a month, right? So we can do that too, where we batch data and send it over to Snowflake, all right? So that's the architecture. I wanted to cover that on a, on a you know, really quickly, just so you have a good understanding. Now, here are the things we do real well that our competitors don't do, right? So once again, let's say we were replicating out of that Oracle or SQL Server source. We do the target schema creation to Snowflake, right? So you have 2000 tables in Oracle. We're gonna, we're gonna get that metadata. We're gonna, we're gonna create the uh, DDL uh, statements for you. And we're going to build out those 2000 tables within Snowflake for you automatically within the UI. It's all within the UI. There's no scripting here. There's no writing code, right? So think about it. I have a large amount of tables. They're now going to be built automatically for you within Snowflake. We do the data type mapping too. Think about it. Because we're building those tables, we know how to map, you know, um, a VAR chart to a string, right? So we'll do the data type mapping for you automatically and we'll build out the table for you. We also do the batch to CDC transition. So what do I mean by that? I'll show you that in a demo. So for those that are familiar with change data capture, that target needs to look like the source before you start the incremental jobs, right? So we'll batch the data first to all the 2000 tables and then we'll automatically start the incremental jobs for you. Once again, all done through the UI Fourth there on the list is DDL change propagation. A lot of folks say, hey, Chris, if I do an alter table in SQL Server, an alter table in Oracle or some other relational source, will it replicate to Snowflake? Absolutely. I'll show you that today, how you could add a column or delete a column and it's gonna propagate to Snowflake. And also to finish up, we do some basic filtering within the tool. We can do some basic transformations. And then at the bottom it says, we do everything in memory, right? And think about it, we do that. That middle tier has to do everything in memory in order to land data in Snowflake within a second or two, all right? So let's kind of jump to, I'm gonna get out of this presentation just for now and jump to the demo, okay? Uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen okay. Uh, this is uh, the click replicate UI. So once you, remember earlier I mentioned everything's run off that middle tier. Once the service is running on that middle tier, your entire team can access uh, our UI through any browser on your network, okay? And as you can see, you just type in URL at the top and you, you kind of go to our tool. And the first thing you guys are gonna notice is like, I have all these different tasks that are already pre-done, right? And guys, a task is just a replication flow from a source to a target, from a source to many targets, okay? Uh, and as you can see, I, I have a large, large selection out here, and, and most of them are from on-premise to on-premise. There's some that are on-premise to the cloud and others that are cloud to cloud. We support that, those different types of deployment models. Before we set up tasks, though, we make it very easy to connect to the different endpoints, right? 
So let's talk about managing endpoints. Today I'm going to do an Oracle to SQL uh, Snowflake on Azure demo. Okay. So for the source endpoints, you see I have a number of different sources here, but I'm going to use this Oracle one today. And we basically just prompt you for the different information that we need, right? Um, the connection string, what's the username, what's the password? How do I want to connect to Oracle? Do I want to use the log miner API? Do I want to use a binary reader? Do I want to connect to ASM and use threads to read extremely quickly? Do I want to read from uh, a active data guard copy, right? Uh, you know, long story short, we'll just prompt you for the connection string information. Then you can go ahead and test that out, make sure it's good. And we do the same exact thing for the target when it comes to Snowflake, right? So let me find my, my, Snowflake, tar my Snowflake target. Here it is. So as you can see for the Snowflake target, we're gonna prompt you for the Snowflake URL, your username, your password, where your warehouse lives, where's your database. What we do just to let you know is we first stage the data in either, in the case of Azure, for, for Azure Blob Storage or Snowflake internal storage. And then what we do is we copy it into Snowflake, okay? So in this particular endpoint connection, we prompt you for your Snowflake information. And here I'm using Snowflake internal storage, right? But if I was to use the Azure blob storage, it would prompt me from everything that you need for your blob storage, okay? And it's different for different cloud providers, right? So if you use an AWS, it's gonna be S3 or Snowflake internal storage. If it's Google, it's gonna be the, the, the Google equivalent, right? Same thing with the Snowflake internal storage. Once again, you type in your information and you test it out. And think about it, we do that for all the different endpoints we support for both sources and targets. Just to show you real quick, if I come up here and hit new endpoint and I pull down our sources, we prompt you for anything, you're for, anything we support, right? Anything from the mainframe to different cloud providers, the same thing with the targets, right? I could pull down here and you'll see we have a, big, a fairly big list that you can go ahead and set up our different endpoints with. So, we managed the endpoint, we created the source, we created the Snowflake endpoint. Let's go ahead and now create a new task, right? So I can create a new task here. I can name it whatever I want. I could put a description in there, right? Um, and now we're gonna decide what kind of replication profile should I choose? Unidirectional is probably the most common replication profile. It's just going from a source to a target, right? From Oracle to Snowflake in this situation. Bidirectional, there may be times where you require data to come back on premise, right? So you may choose bidirectional. Logstream is our one-to-many profile. We have a lot of folks that say, hey, Chris, grab that data out of source again and deliver it to Snowflake and simultaneously deliver it to my data lake on ADLS Gen 2, right? We're able to do that with Logstream. Now, under the task options, uh, you can see that the full load is kind of grayed out and blued out and the applied changes is kind of grayed out and blued out. The full load is what I mentioned earlier. It's the instantiation piece. Those 2000 tables I mentioned earlier, we want to be able to make the source and target look the same. Do a full load on all those tables. Okay. And we do that for you once again through the UI and the apply changes box is basically telling the UI to set up the incremental jobs for me simultaneously, okay? So we're gonna do that today in the demo. I just wanna talk a little bit about the store changes real quickly because later with our data warehousing tool, we're going to go ahead and use that. And the reason being is because we wanna keep a historical look of your data over time, okay? because you guys are gonna be creating your fact tables, your dimension tables, right? You may need to keep a, a customer's address over time and you need to know every time it changed. So store changes is basically setting up another table that has that historical or that archive look of the data in there. We call them CT tables. So we would use that when we use in our data warehouse automation piece, the Snowflake. So that's setting up the new task. For the sake of time, I already had a task that's already predefined. The very next step after that is it'll take you to this UI right here, or this screen right here, the main designer screen. 
And what you would do is you would click on your sources and drag and drop your Oracle source to the source here. Same thing with the target. You would find your, your uh, whatever target you're using. In this case, it's Snowflake. And you would drag and drop it in here. Once again, I could double click on the source and, and double, double check my connection and make sure it's good and that it didn't time out, especially if you're doing a demo to many people. You want to make sure your environment didn't time out. And you can see right here, my connections are good. So that's my unidirectional flow of data. Now, the very next thing is I can now go into my source system and select the tables that I want to replicate the snowflake. I could go here into any schema I have access to and search in that schema. So now I, in the HR schema, I have 15 tables. I can grab them all. I can pick and choose what I want. Just to let you know, we do support wildcarding. I mentioned earlier about those 2,000 tables. Well, maybe 500 of those tables have the same naming convention and they start with the same few letters, right? Well, maybe you just want to pull over those tables. So you get to pick and choose. Another thing we do too is we include with the wildcarding this little percentage sign. This basically tells our tool that any time in the future when I add any additional tables, I want you to, in Oracle, I want you to include that in replication. So if one of your developers adds a new table to production, you don't have to stop this job. It's going to go pick that table up, create it in Snowflake, replicate it to it, right? So that comes in handy because you don't want to keep stopping jobs. So anyway, here you're, you're able to pick and choose the tables for this particular demo. I chose two. Now I could start replication right now, right? But I want to show you some other cool things that we do. So I chose two tables to replicate to Snowflake. If I double click on employees, you'll see we'll give you basic information about the employees table, how it's a non-clustered primary key table. It gives you so many records, so many, you know, what's the size of it. But under transform here, this is how we're gonna map from Oracle on the left to Snowflake on the right, right? So we're going to go ahead and create these tables on the right-hand side, this table on the right-hand side. We're going to use these column names and these data types. Once again, we decide what the data type is. But let's just say you say, hey, Chris, I don't want to call last name last. I just want to rename it to last. Can I override the column? Absolutely. If for whatever reason you think a string 25 isn't good enough, you want to make it a string 50, can I override that? Once again, absolutely. Okay. Can I delete columns? Yeah. I can delete columns. Can I add a column, right? And then do things like add like a commit timestamp or a sequence number. Yeah, I can do that too. Now, if you notice on the right-hand side, you see this little FX and that's basically telling you that you could do an expression on any of your columns, right? So I can come in here on FX under the salary column and build out a whole expression. We can do basic transformations of the data before it ever gets to Snowflake, right? So let's just say I wanted to have, you know, uh, salary times commission or plus commission is the final salary. I can build that out. I can sit here and build out the expression. I can parse the expression and test it out all before starting this job, okay? And I mentioned earlier about uh, can I include header information from SQL Server or Oracle or other source relational systems like the streaming position and the operation type, whether it's an insert, update, delete, or a commit timestamp? Yeah, I could do things like that. But look under functions here, guys. Um, a lot of different functions, you know, string functions. How do I handle lobs? Numerics. You know, I could do a, a max around, right? A lot of folks love to use our date and time functions. You know, you may want a Julian date or a different, you know, a different timestamp within Snowflake. And then we could do those types of things, right? So my point being to you is we can go ahead and do the basic transformations. We could add or delete columns as much as we want, right? We could also filter the data. I mentioned this too. Can I write a where clause and filter the data before I ever get to Snowflake? Absolutely. Can I do parallel loading? Yeah, well, can I load by data ranges or partitions? And in the case here, yeah, we can, right? So we can load that data very quickly. So once we're done here, right, we can now start replication, right? So I'm going to reload the target. And the reload the target basically simulates uh, like starting from new. We're basically going to get the metadata out of the source Oracle system. 
we're going to send it over to Snowflake. We're queuing the tables up. If you notice the screen changed from a designer to a monitor. So we loaded up one table to Snowflake. We loaded up another, right? So the employees table, we loaded 106 records. Uh, the regions table, we loaded seven records. And we give you basic information about the volume in megabytes, how long it took to get over the Snowflake, the throughput records, right? So this is the full load. The full load is now done. So if I go over to my, my spreadsheet for uh, the Snowflake and I do a, a query against my database that I already have open, you see that I have a 106 rows here into the employees table. And you can see that basic information about the, that particular employee. And just take note of this salary column here. Most of the... Um, most of the salaries kind of end in $10, right? Like $2,910. I'm gonna go ahead and increment that up because I'm a nice guy, right? But let's go back to the Replicate uh, console real quick. This shows you that we did the full load, right? And right to the right of it is change processing. Because we highlighted to apply changes, the incremental jobs are now sitting there waiting for inserts, updates, and deletes to happen to replicate the snowflake, right? So if I go ahead and fire up my little widget, and this is just a custom widget, doesn't come with the tool. And let's just say I wanna increase the employee salary by $2, because I'm a nice guy today. You'll see that we updated the employee salary, did salary plus one, it affected 106 rows. I kind of did that twice, right? If you notice right here, it's already starting to uh, apply them to the Snowflake target, right? So 212 rows got updated on the Snowflake target. Uh, and just to show you up here, we, we have a little widget here, a little pie chart. So if I mouse over my pie chart, it shows you I, you know, I did so many updates, inserts, and DDL trans, uh, transformations or transformations. Apply throughput. Give me some basic information about how long it's taken data to get there for both the source and the target. Give me some information about the latency both on the source and the target, right? So through the UI here, guys, we're showing you some great information about what's going on, right? Now, if I go over to my worksheet again, and remember everything was about 2910, this should all jump up to about $12 for everybody, right? So if I run this query here, you can see everybody's salary ended in 2912 now, okay? You know, once again, guys, the UI makes it easy to do. Right. The hardest part is, is standing up the, the middle tier. And like I said, that only takes 15 minutes. Okay. And you're replicating to Snowflake in near to real time within seconds. Okay. Um, other things I want to show you that, are, that I think you'll find very interesting real quick before I jump over to the data warehousing piece is um, under tasks, right? I'm going to show you on the task, I'm going to show you the server, uh, the server uh, tab. So through the UI guys, we could set up notifications, right? You could set up a mail server. Like what if something goes bump in the night, right? You, you want an email sent to you that something's going on, right? You could set up your mail server here, your default recipient list, right? You could go ahead and add users there so that you'll be notified. Um, another great thing we do is global error handling, right? Once again, all done through the UI, there's no scripting. What if there's an environmental error? What if the network between on-premise and Snowflake on Azure goes out, right? Our, our tool could sit here and basically um, retry so many times, right? I want to try a, a thousand times every five seconds or, or try forever. So what's going to happen, just to let you know too, is, and I didn't cover this earlier, was on that middle tier that you guys are setting up, we keep checkpoint information, okay? We know at any given time where we've read from Oracle and where we've written to Snowflake. So that in the case of environmental error, we know where we could pick up where we left off, right? So this tool is gonna constantly try and reestablish connection. And then you guys don't have to do anything. It's gonna pick up where it left off and start replicating the Snowflake, right? And by the way, we handle data errors, right? We also handle table errors. What do you want me to do if I run into a table error? What if you want me to do if, if I have a, a data conflict? Meaning, what if someone went into Snowflake and deleted a record, and then when I'm trying to apply a delete, you know, it can't find the record in Snowflake, what do you want me to do? 
Do you want me to suspend the test? Do you want me to insert a record? What if I find a duplicate? What do you want me to do? What if the record's not found? Do you want me to do an update? Do you want me to suspend? So there's a number of different things you could do to handle uh, conflicts, data errors, environmental variables, all done through the UI on the Snowflake side. Uh, and two other things I wanna show you real quick, scheduler, I mentioned this too. Hey, I wanna quickly shut down my jobs, right? So, cause I have maintenance on the weekend. I could schedule this and do that, right? Same thing with, what if I only wanna batch jobs? Remember earlier I mentioned, maybe you don't wanna do CDC. Maybe you wanna take these 10 tables once a month, replicate in the Snowflake, we can do that. And then also too, moving on and I'll jump to the data warehouse side, user permissions. We interact with the Active Directory, right? So you guys can set up uh, you know, different roles, different groups and have different permissions for the UI, right? You may wanna assign an administrative, some folks to be the, the admins of this, right? Others to just design new tests, others to start and stop processes and others like on a support team to just view this tool and then get back to me on it, right? So once again, as you can see the, the UI is really pretty slick. It does quite a bit. Uh, so uh, that's really replicate, click replicate, uh, just being able to send data. We call it raw data over the Snowflake because that's what it is. You know, we were basically, we're not doing anything special. We're sending everything over maybe to an ODS within Snowflake in near to real time. Now let's talk about one other thing and I'm gonna to jump to the warehouse. Um, this is our enterprise manager. I mentioned earlier that you have a middle tier some, some of our customers have thousands of source systems and thousands of targets, right? And they want one single pane of glass to manage their environment. They're able to do everything that I just showed you with the Replicate UI through the Enterprise Manager. And oh, by the way, guys, this Enterprise Manager does not cost any additional money. It comes with the product, but it does a great job of giving you a single pane of glass of everything I just showed you. It also lets you do things like analytics on that middle tier you know, how is that replicate server acting over time, right? And basically, can I do capacity planning so that I may need to scale out in the future? So we call it enterprise manager. Now for the last 15 minutes, let's talk about click compose, right? So click compose, um, common UI, right? Click compose actually utilizes replicate to give you the real time data warehousing piece, okay? So I just want to show you, I'm going to go back to the replicate console and show you that down here, I have a sales, um, Microsoft SQL Server, my sales are located in an OLTP database within SQL Server, right? And I want to go ahead and land those transactions in an ODS within Snowflake, right? So you can see the tables that I selected, these eight tables down the side, all related to sales. Think about, this is constantly happening, right? Within Compose, will actually reference that replicate task. Uh, so we broke it down into four main sections. And the first section is, once again, how do I connect to the source and the target, right? So for the source system, we're gonna use that OLTP system. If I click on it, you're seeing that basically I am connecting to the source SQL server. I am telling it to use the replicate task sales to snow, right? So it knows, hey, when those committed transactions happen, I want you to include that in the workflow all the way to the data mart, okay? So it's just a connection string. I'm basically telling it that I wanna include both the full load and any change processing that happens in the near future, okay? And I can test that out just like you can replicate. Now, where's my data warehouse? Now from here, I just wanna let you know, and this is really important, is we're utilizing the power of the data warehouse of Snowflake. These two end boxes, right? The ODS lands in Snowflake. It's a schema within a database. The data warehouse, the EDW is a schema within Snowflake. And the data marts are a schema within Snowflake. We're utilizing the power of Snowflake to do the transformations. We do ELT. It's set-based statements, merges, and joins. Everything's done. Once again, these last two boxes, 
is done in Snowflake. There's no processing off box somewhere. Everything done within Snowflake, all right? So first box here, I'm basically saying, hey, under data warehouse, I want to go ahead and use my, you know, you put in the basic information, my server name, my ID. And once again, I mentioned this just now, my warehouse, that's the name. My database name is this. My EDW is just a schema. I called it EDW. My data mart is just a DMART schema, right? And I can go ahead and test that once again, make sure it's good to go. So this first box, connection. Now what we're gonna do is help you model the data, okay? So we're gonna reference that replicate task. It's our tool smart enough to know, use that replicate task, go into that SQL server and find a relationship, right? Between the tables that are in there. Help me create the logical model, all right? So we, we call it discovering and I already for the sake of time did the discover. So what I did is I went into the source SQL server and told it to discover it. Now, can I bring in a model from Erwin? Let's say you guys have developed a model over years and you'd rather use that, right? Well, you could import a model from Erwin itself, okay? And by the way, when you're, when you're creating your fact and dimension tables, we automatically add things like the date and time entities. You need those, right? So if I click on that, it's gonna add, uh, add date and time entities. Once we, do, once we discover, we will display the relationships between the tables, okay? Now guys, listen, this is the pie in the sky relationship. I'm gonna be honest with you, right? We went, into, we went into SQL Server, we found these seven or eight tables. We looked at primary key, foreign key relationships, but you know, yours is gonna be more complex. You may have an Oracle source and a SQL Server source, right? You're able to do that too. You could have many different sources of data, okay? Or for instance, you may want to bring in uh, data from a JSON through Snowpipe, right? And then include it in your model. We're able to handle that too. So once we find the relationships here, you can drill down into them. So I'm going to drill down into order details. So I drilled down to order details and we found all the attributes for you, okay? And oh, look, so here are the attributes. And then by the way, we define whether they're type one or type two type attributes. Type one attributes, as you know, are good fact tables. Type twos are great dimension tables, okay? We help you or we define that for you just by analyzing it. Now, can I override type one with type two? Absolutely, we could do that, right guys? Uh, we just take the first swag at it. So because all these columns are type one, this is a great fact table, guys, all right? And oh, by the way, what I did here is I'm able to add attributes. Like I add an attribute, I add these bottom ones here called uh, amount and units in stock. So why did I do that? Because later on in my transformations, I may want to do a function or I may want to do a lookup in units in stock to another source system somewhere. You're able to enrich the logical model. And that's what I did right here. Now, also without getting too complicated and guys, just to let you know, I'm going through this relatively quickly. If you're very interested in it, we have an advanced data analytics team that can drill down into this and take hours and explain every little detail. But I just want to let you know that we're loosely based off a data vault methodology, okay? So here we're looking at a logical model. If I look at the physical model, as you may or may not know, fact tables are hubs, um, and then you have your satellites, right? And by the way, we take care of things like um, your surrogate keys. We track, we, we automatically, we automatically put in uh, things like, you know, the run insert and the update date. How many times did you run transformations on it? We keep track of all that good information. So this, so you got a hub here for employees, right? And then for a satellite. So by the way, because this is a dimension table, we automatically put the date time, the from column, the from date, the to date the surrogate key, right? We build that through the UI for you. So we're, so once again, logical model, physical model, we're gonna create hub and satellites. And by the way, this naming convention, eh, may not be crazy about it. Can I rename that naming convention? Yeah, you can, right? My point being is we're going to help you build out this model. That was a fact table, just to show you, this particular one is, is a, a type two, which would be good dimension tables, right? 
So from there, when we're done with the model, we'll validate the model, right? Then we'll come in here, we'll actually tell it to create your EDW objects, okay? And then the very next step is we're gonna basically create the ELT sets for both the full load and for CDC, right? We're gonna do the mappings. Everything's done, everything's set base equal here, guys, right? So when we do the mappings, we're mapping from the staging area. Let me show you, I'll click on order details, that staging area uh, to your, your enterprise data warehouse, right? So we do the mappings for you. You guys could do the mappings yourselves. If you don't like that, we do it. You could override it. Now this mapping, uh, just to let you know, you is we can make it fairly complex. Let's say you have a fairly complex mapping. You could type right here on the lower left-hand side. We're do, I'm showing you a table mapping, but you could write a complex query with a multiple table join, right? And by the way, guys, this is where I, I mentioned earlier where I added those, uh, those attributes, line item amount, expected units in stock, because once again, full-blown expression editor in this tool, right? So I built out an expression where I could, once again, I could come in here and say, hey, build out the expression, you know, units in stock. So unit price is $4, quantity is two, my discount's 20% and test my expression, right? And it's got six dollars and forty cents. I could build this before I even start that work for that replication happening. Okay, so uh, you basically are doing the transformations. I could do a lookup for units in stock to another source system. So we're building the ELT behind the scenes, right? We're building the code within Snowflake to transform that data. Also, we could do things like data profiling on the data on the high level, right? I could come in here and say, hey, give me a quick look of how my data looks. You know, how many, how many nulls do I have? Or, you know, in a particular table, is it 100% nulls? Hopefully this will come up quickly, it's taking its time. But we basically do data profiling and then you could drill down into the table, you'll see that it's highlighted in blue, yeah. So right here, how many nulls, the count, how many distinct values that I have, right? Show me the data. I could do data quality. Right? So if I click on data quality, I basically, I'm not a nice guy today. I could build cleansing rules. And these cleansing rules, guys, you basically have to uh, set up all using SQL. We're not a full-blown enterprise data quality tool per se, but you can build out the cleansing rules that will happen within Snowflake. Same thing with validation rules. I basically said, hey, listen, if you're making less than you know a certain amount, then you know I want you to accept it and report it. And by the way, we do create an error mark so we can capture any problematic uh, records within an error mark, right? So you can do those types of things within the product itself. Uh, basic profiling, basic data quality type checks. And then from there, guys, um, we'll create those. We'll go ahead and run, the, run this particular set. And it basically generates the ETL commands for you behind the scenes. And I'm not going to go through all these, but I didn't create these. The tool did, right? So whether it's creating temporary tables, um, indexes, dropping indexes, uh, populating staging tables, whatever it is, you guys can drill down into it. Like this is just a staging table it's creating, right? You guys, and by the way, you can save this off. Let's just say you don't wanna run all this stuff through the UI. You wanna save it off into a script and run it on your own, right? You can do that too, right? We offer that capability. We're not trying to hide anything on you. So once we're, and by the way, we do, we do these ETL sets or ELT sets for both the full load and the transformation, right? And then the very next thing is you're like, hey, help me create those different data marts, right? You could have one or many data marts depending on your business, right? Help me use your star schema wizard and help me create either a transactional, an aggregate or state oriented type of uh, star schema within Snowflake, right? And the overall goal, guys, here is to just do that. Help me create that star schema, right? Whether it's order details surrounded by its dimensions. And then here's another level too, guys. I told you we did transformations on that on, on the last step, but basically in here, I could go ahead and make last second changes to the tables in the data mark, right? Uh, and, and once again, we'll push this star schema to the data mark. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really, 
uh, it's really a very robust tool. Um, and once again, from the committed transactions all the way to the data marts and Snowflake, something I have to show you real quick uh, is this workflow, right? So I can now schedule a workflow to happen. So I'm basically saying, I, I drew this on the bottom here. I'm saying, go out, check for change data capture that's happening in the SQL server, run it through that logical model, that physical model, those transformations, put it in my Snowflake data mart. I want you to run this every three minutes, every two minutes, right? So this will constantly just sit there and look for data out of your source system and apply it to Snowflake, right? Um, uh, another great thing to point out, and, and tools, a lot of tools just don't do this, um, is things like, let's go back in here. And by the way, this tool does the same thing for data lakes. Let's say, mention, remember, remember earlier I mentioned I could take data and send it to S3 or ADLS Gen 2 and then make sense of it from there. The same tool we do for data lakes too, right? I just want to show you here we do version control with GitHub. A lot of folks want to be able to do that. They want to create a deployment package. I want to take this entire workflow, save it off and deploy it someplace else. Oh, and by the way, can you document absolutely everything I did in this workflow? Yeah, I click on a button. I could say, hey, show me all my documentation, right? And by the way, this documentation creates a zip file. And in that zip file, we show data lineage over time, okay? So very robust tool. Guys, I, I talked a lot. Uh, awful lot about our two main products. Remember, it's Click Replicate for basic replication, Click Compose for data warehousing to the data mart. Um, and I think I'm going to kind of end on that. Uh, hopefully, uh, you see that the tool is very robust. We went through this quickly. Please get back with us if you want a more detailed um, demo of either one of the products. Um, I guess, I guess we have maybe three or four minutes. We could open up some questions. Does anybody have, I know that was a lot to cover. All right, well, thank you for your time. Uh, and uh...